What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Childish. We are back at it again with yet another episode of Educate and Dominate, that one on one interview series where we take some of the top names of the game and get their insights so we can bring your game to the next level. My next guest does not need any introduction. This guy has been around for quite some time, a former ranked one player on the PvE side when it comes to TOA, a consistent Guardian 3 player, and former rank one player in one of the hardest arena resets out to date. Guardian 3, global player, oh my god, Bomber, boom, what's up, baby, how you doing? Oh, shit, what up, Childers, welcome, welcome, everybody, to this amazing episode, we got some awesome talk topics today, I can't wait to fucking go over them all. We got so much stuff to talk about, it's, 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 it's crazy, it's crazy, but uh, uh, let's go ahead and kind of fill people in, for those that don't know, um, oh my god, Bomber was the um, one that started it off for this channel, I was able to uh, reach out to him, and you know, have this idea of creating Educate and Dominant. He uh, took my idea with open arms and decided to basically start the trend of what is now one of the uh, more established um, a series out there for some of this war as far as uh, people that are looking for some of that top end, you know, knowledge to kind of take their game out there. So a uh, big shout out to you, sir, for giving me the opportunity and I appreciate uh, you coming on board. Oh, no problem, man. You do so much for the community. Can't, can't deny that. Got to help you out. Yep. As much yep, as I could. Now, and then, of course, uh, if you guys haven't got the opportunity, uh, definitely pause this one. Uh, make sure you go ahead and check out the first episode if you haven't seen this one. A lot of great information there. Um, but in this one here, we're going to kind of do a follow-up. You know, So some of the introduction questions that we generally ask, um, that'll be in the first one. This one, we're going to um, get right on into some of the content. But um, before we get into that, let's go ahead and just hit out in some of the accomplishments that have happened um, since we last talked to you. Um, I would have to say that probably one of the bigger ones is the uh, partnership with Twitch. Congratulations, sir. Oh, thank you, man. I've worked. Years, man. Years. I've been on Twitch for over three years at least. I've been streaming, making YouTube videos before I even graduated in high school. I started maybe when I was 16. Maybe 15. I don't know. But I've been starting social media ever since I was like maybe 13 as well. With Back in like the MySpace days is when I really started networking big time. Like kind of more than the average networking so I mean it's been a long long journey when I even look back that far to like trying to grow and create something out of nothing and I mean I'm here finally and I have something to show for it and it feels good definitely yeah definitely and uh, in, in addition to that um, as, as uh, most of the guys that have followed me for quite some time as well I'm probably one of the um, Main YouTuber to YouTuber, blah, 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 fail <laughs> YouTubers out there that really go out of their way to uh, promote uh, the YouTube community. Um, and if I had to say I had myself a, a twin, right, a brother from another mother, that would have to be uh, Oh My God Bomber from the Twitch side, who's developed uh, quite a community on the Twitch side, um, and 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 has gathered his people in what we now call the Summoners War Fellowship. So why don't you go ahead and and hit uh, hit the users up here, let them know what the Summoners War Fellowship is all about, and and how to be going. About tuning into that. If you ever go to any, pretty much most of the streamers that are on Summoner's War, a lot of times you see what game they're playing, you see their username, you see what game they're playing, it says Summoner's War. Right next to that it says, on the Summoner's War Fellowship. The Summoner's War Fellowship is like our streaming group. You usually get typically invited to this if you like go out above and beyond, out of your way for the community in some way, shape, or form. You know, educating people, um, writing guides a lot, streaming often, um, bringing a lot of people to our community, things like that will get you invited if you ever want to. There's, I have a whole like video describing everything about it, like requirements and everything, who, to, where to go, what to do, when to do it. It's, I guess if you if you type on YouTube like the Summers or Fellowship, you might find it. But that's it's it's a pretty long explanation of like all the requirements and everything, but. I mean, it, if you're a streamer, that's basically what you want. That's where you want to be if you're streaming Summoners War, is in the Summoners War Fellowship. That's, that should be your goal. I mean, it's nice to have goals. It gets you around in the game. There's a lot of amazing streamers in it right now. From the from the beginning of time, you know, like Scat, Varian, myself, Cranthar, um... Man, there's so many I can't even yeah, go over them all. <laughs> it's there's, just, there's way it's too pages many. Pages and pages. These are just like the beginning. 
Yeah, I was going to say what we're going to do, they'll, they'll go ahead and see it already right now, but I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, put an annotation here, just basically cover the screen with all of the all the names of the, um, the people in the Summit of War Fellowship. So shout out to all of you guys for doing what you do to make it uh, Summit of War what it is today. In addition, um, the link that uh, Bomber was talking about with regards to the video and how to get a part of the fellowship, we'll go ahead and make sure that it's in the description down below. So make sure that if you are a Twitch streamer looking to um, you know, take some of that knowledge that you learned and provide it towards the community. Uh, make sure you check that out so we can get you on board uh, as soon as possible. Um, so, all right, let's get right into it. Um, we got a lot of things to talk about here. I'm trying to think of what I want to hit up here first. I guess we got to talk about um, some of the things that have changed as far as uh, people coming into the game and and, and 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 kind of figuring out a new flow as far as you know what are the priorities in progression and whatnot. So, you want to go ahead and hit that up and elaborate on what you want to do with that. So the early game has definitely switched from when I've started, from when we've made most of these videos, definitely, because first, Giants has changed slightly. A lot of the videos that were made, a lot of the like theories that were made about early game progression has definitely changed. The, the way you get runes, you can't even get violent anymore, so there's no point in farming violent. Um, the area that you get swift runes from is so easy to do with wind units now. They've moved it over. One, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure it's at the Sigamara stage now. So, well, not the Sigamara stage, but at the mountain, um, what is it, Mount, Mount Sis, Ragun? or Mount, yeah, White Mount Ragoon. Yeah, yeah. This place has swift runes now, and it's so early in the story mode, so it's so easy to get them, and you can get five star blues out of there. So, it's. It's very, very, very efficient to be doing these early stages because it's so easy for new players. You can just go and find a wind pixie in the shop. Eventually, you know, you run through Tamor Desert maybe with some reps in maybe like your second day or third day of even playing, and you could already be farming out and already starting your Giants be tenting. You know, like you could have two of your units right away and you're already farming for it. You know, working towards like things like Megan and Bella in the future and Veramos fusion in the future as well and you might be able to put something else in or use like a Veramos rep if you can't if that's a far-fetched idea for you but clearing B10 is probably now more easier than ever before and which is really good because even talking with like dude and everything they want like a beginning floor flow of the game and like they want beginner advice because they want the early players to be able to progress you know they want you guys to get something get into the game, get through the game, and like I've done so much testing and so many ask, like I've I've talked to so many different people so far, and I've recommended the strategy to so many different people, and I've seen only success, only success, in, unless they mess up in some way and don't follow advice in the correct way. But a lot of times it's like big, big mistakes. Is like your Bernard's not fast enough. Um, you didn't you didn't ruin the units properly, so. Typically, everything's going to be ruined with speed 2 slot. Everything, because you want Bernard to be buffing your entire speed set. So, first, your swift set is going to be an extra amount of speed, and then your speed 2 slot is going to be more speed, alleviating your cooldowns. So, when you Bernard buff, you get 30% extra on top of both of those things. So, your swift set's 30% more potent, and your 2 slot is 30% more potent. It's the same thing. Like with defense runes as well, if you have a defense buff and you have defense runes, your defense is now 50% more potent on that slot. So, early game, you, re you really want speed HP HP. And then, a lot of the times what I see players like uh, failing runs with as well is that they didn't like build their Megans. They, like, most of the time it's like, Megan is so crucial to this like progression stage now. It, a lot of times if I see people stuck and they're asking me on my help on on my stream and I'm like, you need to build your Megan, man. You need to build Megan because that defense buff is basically a healer. You need to think of it as like a proactive healer. You're going into dragons and not only is Megan reducing the time you spent in dragons, so when you are progressing through it all, Megan helps in giants as well to have 100% uptime on defense buff so you don't die randomly to like a burst amount of damage. The biggest, biggest mistake is that you bring too many healers and not enough defenders. That is the number one cause of failing early on progression, is you need to defend yourself from dying in one blow. And that goes hand in hand throughout the entire game. 
even in Endgame Guardian Arena, is if you can't stop yourself from dying in one blow, then you're not going to win. Even at the leg, even at the, to get Legend Rank, even to get Guardian Three, like it will go through the entire game. This mindset of defending yourself from dying that to that one shot, and it, it works to dragons. It works to TOA as well. Like as long as you guys can live, which is typically why you invest your towers into more defensive and speed scenarios because speed is not only offensive it's also defensive as well by clearing debuffs faster it allows you to not die during your defense break so i mean i do a plethora of like not account reviews but monster box like assistance i don't really go to your account and check you out i i rec i require you guys to send me like a screenshot of your monster box and i mean i've looked at so many different accounts and i've played around with so many other people's accounts just through proxy by telling them what to do at certain scenarios that I I feel like the grasp that I have on this game is so good now more than ever like I, I can <laughs> I can pretty much tell you any anywhere what to do anytime now and it's amazing to feel like that because I mean that puts it gives me some confidence in the, even my own gameplay I like reset night I, I'm like I know exactly what to do against this guy I know where, where to do and I mean if you guys watched my stream when that night I got legend. I mean, I I was looking for key people. Like, you know, like we have everything down to a science now. So I mean, there's I, I see a lot of haters on Reddit, a lot of haters all over the place that don't understand that there's this mentality where like you can judge things without knowing exactly like everything about it. I don't need to have a unit in order to know exactly what you need to do. I don't need to have the exact units you have in order to theorycraft what you needed to do like at the end game level we've seen it all we've been around on this game for one and a half years almost now maybe a little bit more a little bit less for some of us but we could the late game players will definitely definitely be able to tell you where to go what to do when to do it and a lot of the newer players don't respect that because they're not in that mindset yet they don't i know when i was at that mindset nobody could give me advice because i like I was right there with everybody else, neck and neck. I could look at what other people were doing and try to, like, you know, mimic some of it and steal some ideas here and choose which ones are bad and good for me. But now it's like we have it. we have everything answered. It feels good. It does feel good. Um, when you're talking about these particular units that they need to focus on that is going to make their way up at the Giants B10, there's a lot of discrepancy when it comes to... Um, you know, how far should you take a particular rune, you know, the quality? Or do we max it out? Do we go plus 12? Do we start, you know, saving up those four-star runes and start going big? Or do we wait until we get the five-star runes? Can you kind of elaborate on that and, and tell people what they should focus on when they when they get to that level? Yeah. Um, if you have, like, a three-star rune, I, w I wouldn't upgrade it past plus nine. But anything that's four-star, I would, I would plus 12 it if you're going to plan on using that in Giants. B10. So the main early game strategy that I've been telling everybody to do is the, the fastest route is within a week, you got to have Giants B10 unlocked. Right, right off the bat, go get some rep units. Ramagos can solo everything but B9. Praha, Camilla, Ariel, Chow, all kinds of different water units can solo B9 themselves. Like, no problem. And then those rep units will get you through the stage of the game. We didn't have this luxury back in the day. So now this luxury is everywhere. There's a whole plethora of like amazing players in their community that will help you out and let you lend a hand and let you use their reps for even like a little bit, you know. Even a lot of top players will let you use their reps for just, you know, a day. But once you get to that B10 stage, when it's unlocked, you know, what I recommend is that you, you should probably have a Veramos lead. Try to get a Veramos lead of some kind. It can be a rep unit, or you can fuse it, but I, I think that that should be your first fusion. Focus on that big time. Shannon, Bernard, Bella, and then Megan. And once you get to the boss, if you manual play it, you're going to have 100% uptime on defense buff. And you're going to have a lot of extra gauge. As long as you ruined everything correctly, you know, max out speed on Bernard, put speed in two slot on Shannon and Bella and Megan, you should be fine, you know, like that speed buff, you're going to rotate your cooldowns off of cooldown before the boss can move too many times. You'll get enough dots on them through Veramos and Megan. Boss is going to die. It's very, very easy. It's probably one of the most stress alleviant 
um, routes in the game. Megan's, you know, relatively not obtainable for a lot of players, and you might think that it's not like farmable, but unknown scrolls are farmable. So if you farm unknown scrolls, you're going to be able to summon it. As long as you keep summoning unknown scrolls, you will get it. And Rebecca's the Hall of Heroes, so I mean, you got your skill ups this weekend too. Then you go down the road from there, you swap out Shannon for Bernard, and once you get all of that team six starred from running Giants enough, you just bring that team right into Dragons. And then you're you're literally good to go. And the thing is is about those six units too, is that those six units can bring you to TOA one hundred and finish TOA one hundred. That's what I usually recommend is like a Beretta and a Shannon and a Bernard and a Bella and then a Megan or anything else. You don't have to use Megan. You could use uh Veramos as well to get that healing debuff off, and that will clear your TOA 100 even all the way up. Those six units can get you everything from the beginning to the end game, and that's what I've been really trying to preach to people is that you don't need anything in this game to succeed besides what's given to you now, and that's amazing for new players because we didn't have that when we started out. We didn't even have fusions back when we started out. You know that that wasn't even a possibility. So it's more luxurious and more. It's a, it's a lot easier to get into this game now than it's ever been, and I feel like people are ignoring that fact, and they're just summoning. They're like, oh, I need Chasun, oh, I need Chloe, I need to do this, when realistically, their their best units are right there in front of them, and it didn't take me, it took me a long time to realize that that kind of mentality is like, my best units are already here, I just need to put my best runes on them, and I guess when you look, if you look at my Bernard that would be the prime candidate. I think Bernard is my best unit. Better than anybody I have. I'm not even joking. I, I summoned Praha recently. I have Perna. I have Zeros. Bernard's my best unit. Hands down. Hands down. You look at my Bernard. My Bernard is my best unit. And it's a three star. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's on every defense I ever make. It's on almost every AO I take into Arena. It's... It's got me through so much content. I didn't respect my Bernard until later in the game either. I I was a Megan fan back in the speed race days, and I was like, but Megan's got defense buff, and it'll interrupt. It'll eventually go, and then I was just making all these theories that Megan was better. But realistically, Bernard, like, at end, like a more endgame like level of thinking, Bernard is. Bernard is one of the, if not one of the best units in the game. Like He is so good <laughs> like to have to have speed scaling defense buff and the way that he buffs gauge even if he gets dispelled he temporarily gave free speed to your team so even in the dispel cleave at high ends that temporary speed advantage can get you a win sometimes you might go before their enemy be like regardless because of the speed buff sometimes and that's huge a lot of people don't respect that now my Bernard's pumping out over 400 speed when he's speed buffed, and that's that needs to be respected. You know, like 400 speed during speed buff, that's four turns to some of the like slower units out there. You know, you can't can't keep up with that. Right, and definitely with regards to the recent changes that have happened, guys. If you guys haven't been following the updates from Com to Us, Com to Us recently updated um, uh, similar units, similar units uh, like Bernard to improve the AI of their third skill, Tailwind, or or other units' um, attack bar abilities. So if there wasn't, if you, if you didn't realize how how strong it is now, you're gonna definitely see it uh, even more in the meta when it comes to arena defense, Guild Wars defense. Um, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely growing, and uh, I'm actually kind of excited because I've always used mine just as the buffer per se. But you know, looking at um, the units and how the uh, stats overall are, you know, base stats or whatnot, I can see why uh, this unit is a top-notch unit. So hopefully people, you know, get in tune with that because it is a very, very good unit indeed. Um, let me see here. What do we got? Um, was there anything else that you wanted to kind of comment on with regards to the um, early stages of the game and, and how to go about it? I would say that if you summon that flashy Nat 5, this is like key. Like, I, I, I asked on my stream yesterday for my viewers and for some of the people that we talked to in our fellowship I'm like, I brought up this discussion, I'm like, can you think of any unit that you can replace that would be just as good, if not better, that's four star or five star, in in my like advice to early game, 
what would you replace? I didn't get anything back. Out of that, like we, we could not think of one thing to replace out of those six units for anything. The only thing I could think about, as I mentioned right away, that me heal is very similar to Megan and might be able to do the same job. But in PvP, you kind of want that gauge buff. And even in Dragons and Giants, you kind of want that gauge buff as well. That's like 33 or 30% of a skill cooldown. Like a lot of players are looking at that Wind Penguin Knight and they're like, oh, a skill cooldown? This is nice, you know? But they're forgetting that an attack gauge and a stun is a skilled cooldown as well. If you get a full attack gauge, you just got a skill cooldown for free, right? So when you're buffing 30% of a gauge, you're technically taking 30% of a cooldown off. And Megan's doing that, but also defense buffing and also power buffing and has dots. So you kind of got to like think like defense buff is way better than that when Penguin Knight, in my opinion. And I'd rather have less of a cooldown reduction and a defense buff than, you know, a speed buff because Bernard's already offering them a speed buff. I'm going to bring Bernard like everywhere, even dragons. A six star Bernard lives in dragons, no problem. He's usually one of the last ones dead. And then when you think about um, a stun, for example, when you are stunning units, your tip, like if you stun everybody on the enemy team, you just got a free cooldown on your turn. So. I mean, you got. I guess you guys got to open your mind to all scenarios and look at units because that that hype about the wind penguin. I don't actually agree with that. I think that it's a relatively weaker unit because of the fact that stunning the unit is typically better. Well, in boss scenarios where the boss is non-stunnable, that would be a scenario where wind penguin knight would come into play. But a lot of people are talking about TOA waves with it, so I don't know. But that early game level. I guess I got a standpoint. Stick to your routine, stick to your route, stick to your goals. And as long as you keep your goals in mind, you're going to get there. Eventually, you will get there. As long as you, you know, you listen to that advice, you listen to like what's going on there, it will work out for you. Gotcha. And let's go ahead and kind of finish off with a recap for your top six units again for the people to focus on. Oh, that would be first thing you, you started in the game, you think Veramos is far, far away from you. Look at the Veramos Fusion, look what is required and save every single one. You're going to be, you're going to feel an empty pit in your stomach of hatred towards yourself if you summon one, or sack one of those away and you realize it later down the road when you're trying to get it, because I did. I hate, I was yep. very angry, because I did that. Then, after after you keep that out, first things first, Megan, Shannon, and Bernard. Those three are easy to obtain. Two of them are right out of story or shop. And then Megan is from Unknown Scrolls. You just keep summoning until you get it. Weekend, get get your Bella. That's five units right there. Those five units will get you through Giants. Those five units are the easiest to get to go right into Giants. And then you fuse a uh, Beretta eventually down the road while you're farming Giants. You just keep farming Giants over and over and over. You get a rune-based setup, and that's your strength. Runes are your strength. If you're spending all of your crystals on getting better runes, you don't need better monsters then. You can use these monsters and you can just, you know, slaughter everybody that has all these nat fives that don't have runes on them at a lower fighter rank, you know, or at a challenger rank that when you're if you're starting out, you know, you can beat these players no problem with these farmable comps. And that's what I've been doing on my brother's account as well. And then you six star that Beretta, you swap out Shannon because she don't belong in Dragons early on. You bring her over to Dragons, no problem, you're good to go. And like, that's your comp. You either use Veramos or Beretta Leader. A lot of players have been opting into Veramos Leader. It'll, I think it alleviates the uh, amount of HP you need on subs. A lot of players are struggling. I th think that's the most common. I When I was doing it, I was I had a lot of HP on subs. I didn't have a lot of speed on subs. I used Beretta Leader. So it depends on what kind of rolls you got on your runes, on what you need. You just try out both if you don't know which what you're stronger in, whether you're more defensive, whether you're faster. If you're faster, you run the Veramos, you know. And then that is a right tower than boss comp. If you take the right tower off and do it, yeah. And I said Bernard in there, too. You do use Bernard. It is very good. Everything's got to be six-star, though, on that comp. And everything usually has to be plus 12 around the board, maybe some plus 15 runes. I mean, this is more later down the road. Dragons isn't, you know, a pushover. You got to work on Dragons. You really do. All right, all right. Sounds good, my man. All right, so 
Moving in from the PvE to the PvP side, we got ourselves the new and improved arena meta for the last, uh, I want to say about, what, six to eight weeks, even more so, a little bit more so, with the incorporation of some of these new units and uh, the synergistic ways of bringing them on board. Uh, what's your take on the arena meta as it is today, and uh, how'd you go about kind of conquering it on your own level to keep yourself at the Guardian 3 ranks? Well, I was in and out of G3 until I pulled the Praha recently, three weeks ago now. And I ever since I pulled the Praha, I've been G3. Well, I was G3 every time except for once. Because I was legend, baby. That yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My man. <laughs> That's awesome. But um, the meta is unit reliant at very, very, very end game. You can break in without units into the G3 area. But it's very, very hard. I was in and out between G3 and G2 because of a unit disadvantage. And that was a Dispeller. I didn't have any Dispellers made. I could have opted into uh, Aquila. And I would have had a better defense at the time. But I just, I was too stubborn to do it. I just didn't do it. I was running my speed comp and that was good enough for me. I didn't have any purpose for Aquila at all. Whether it was like, I was trying to use it on offense and trying to play with it at 5 star to see if it was going to work. But... It just didn't appeal to me that well because I would have to make up for the disadvantage and bring in a healer instead. And pulling Praha was probably like the biggest thing for me. Like I having Zeros, Praha, like and my Bernard, I mean, come on. If I just put those three on defense, I know a lot of players would struggle against that. Like just alone. That's that's a very difficult thing to fight against. Um I would probably say that in the meta though, I think that Praha and Tiana are a little bit overpowered at high end. I think that Praha is insanely overpowered, though. Tiana, I do think that th if they reduced the attack gauge a little bit on Tiana, like the attack gauge increase, maybe like 20%. 20%, yeah. It might require better runes to, to be efficient, and it would probably promote a little bit more... Um, like I, I want to call it skill, but you guys can call it whatever you want. A little bit more finesse on your on your team base, you know. Like where right right now, it's like you could be so far away from your Tiana, and yet you just come in there and slaughter, and it just seems so easy. Same thing with like Praha is like <laughs> to condense the roles the way she does. Oh my God! Like she she gives herself turns. What you what you guys don't realize is I I compared. A lot of players that don't realize that Praha is overpowered. I compared gauge buffs earlier. Gauge buffing is basically cooling yourself down. Praha gauge buffs on auto attack. Her auto attack gives her 45% gauge every time she crits. But now that is that's half of a cooldown every single time she moves pretty much. You know, like every single time she moves, she she takes a cool, half of a cooldown off of her off of her abilities. Now, she can stun you and dispel you at the same time with despair, causing interrupts on any combos. So this meta is all about combos. Combos, whether it's being your like speed comp into double Lucian, like you might call that a combo, or your Galleon into your like AoE damage dealer, Akamir, Zeros, whatever you want to do. Those are combos, like defense breaking, power buffing, AoE damage. That, that's typically how you roll into Arena and you want to combo them. And that's very, very fast. And usually, like, the rank 1 players, if, if you get rank 1 nowadays, you're probably comboing on offense. Like, I don't know many other forms of attack other than comboing. Whether it's, there's other, there's a many, many, many amounts of combos you can talk about. Um, Sierra Leader, Double Bomber, and Tiana works very well, too. Like, that's a very, very fast speed clear as well. Um, then, what else does Praha have, you know, like? She is a healer. She heals you for so much. She resets the game pretty much. Like, you just almost killed everybody. And now Praha's like, nope. Every four turns, she's like, you got to fight my whole team over again. You know, like, in my eyes, there's no better unit in the game right now. I, I don't use Praha. I don't use Zeros on defense right now during the week. I don't use, I don't use like, a plethora of units on my defense. I use Bernard and Praha, and then whatever and whatever. And those two units, like literally, I wake up Guardian 2 every single morning. I'm at least Guardian 2 every morning when I wake up now. I'm just having Praha on defense. It's it's crazy. With the amount of players that we have 
that are attacking and avoiding Prahas, like, she is by far one of the most overpowered units in the game. And it's nuts. Like, getting her was absolutely crazy. But, I guess when it comes down to the meta at, like, Reset Night, it's all about dispelling your enemy and combo breaking them for defense. And that's what Praha does. Tiana can't offer that. She's just going to dispel both sides. She's not going to really combo break. She's going to set up a combo for your team, but they can stop that before it happens. They could uh, stop it midway and interrupt you maybe even. Like, they could they could do so many different things that could really mess you up. Like, if you bring in a Leo and a faster gauge buffer, Tiana doesn't get a turn because your turn was denied by the gauge. So, no matter what your speeds are, on Tiana, if somebody's faster than you, no matter what your speed timing is, if they bring in Leo and a gauge buffer, they can just one shot your whole team with like double Lucians or whatever. Tiana's not gonna live even one Lucian. I, I single kill power buff. With power buff Lucian, I single kill Tiana's every single time and it's like that's over. You can't come back from that. It's it's just not offered on defense. Like same thing as like Juno. Juno is arguably the closest thing to Praha. But it doesn't condense rolls, so you're forced to bring in a healer to beat those longevity comps. Like, you don't want to be slow rolled to death by, like, somebody that's lower rated because they're going to steal 15 points off of you. So to get rank 1, you need to be able to, like, bring in a healer, some kind of sustain. Because they'll just bring in a bunch of tanks and, like, maybe a Bella or something. They'll slow roll you and just win. It's very, very typical to see these kinds of attacks. And that's what really holds people down in that G3 area is losing 15 points from somebody in G2. And that's, I mean, that's why I got Legend, because of Praha, because I wasn't able to be slow rolled, because I could beat almost anybody at the time. Like, if, if they attacked me and my Praha did stun them, because typically I, I think I have the third or the fourth fastest Bernard on the server, typically if you attack me, you know, I'm, my Bernard's going to buff, and then my Praha might dispel. If she dispels, she might stun you. If she stuns you, then she combo breaks you, and you can't, you know, do your combo. And then if Zara's flame breaths, then it's over from there. You know, like you know the drill; it just keeps going downhill from there. And that's the offensive defensive meta at like a high end. And I I don't think that you should be taking this. Um, I don't think that the the lower rated player should be taking this unless you think that you can break into that. If you have what it, the units require to do that to compete at that level, be, because at that at that legend rank, it's like so hard. It's so there's so much scrutiny on legend rank because you're fighting against the best of the best of the best. But to get into Guardian Three, I was doing it on the regular basis without Praha, without a unit advantage. I was running Tyrone, Bernard, Verd, and then I was running Zeros. But I see a lot of guys run Lucian in that slot. I was just using whatever I had for AOE damage at the time. But that that defense got me G3 so many times. The problem with that defense is it's very countered by like highly countered by uh, by Leo, and that 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 opens us a door of attackers. There's a lot of players with Leos now, and they've kind of came out of the woodworks and made their presence known. Like you need to you need an answer to Leo. You need to be able to beat Leo once in a while, or you're not going to get up there. You know, you need to be able to do it, but. I guess the way that I was trying to go about it is to get my Bernard and my Verd faster than their Chloe's on, on there, so then I could get my combos off before them. So if they did use their Leo's ability on either of those, I would still be faster than them. I, I de-ruined my Verd, though, by, by the way, after I... Because he's on Despair, so I moved him, moved a lot of his runes over to Praha. But okay. what I, my whole goal was, like, with a Speed Leader and with Verd, I could be faster than their Chloe's. So there was only like one or two guys that had Chloe's faster than mine that also had Leo. So I only had to worry about like two guys at the time. So it's about like knowing your demographics, knowing how to beat them, where to beat them, and you know, rising above, man. And that's that's what it's all about. Like working with what you got, and that's why I love this game so much, is working with what you have in order to excel in the game. And it's not like any other game where, like, in card games, you get you can get every card whenever you want. You go buy a card, whatever. You get every card, and you just have all the answers to everything. This game is like, you only get your hand. 
and you have to play Texas Hold'em. You know, like you. This this mm-hmm. is what I love about this game is because I'm a I was a big Texas Hold'em fan back in the, like back in my like high school days. Always playing Texas Hold'em with my buddies. So I love that that bluff aspect where like even at end game level, I'm switching my defense out once in a while because I I know what the, I know what he's attacking with. I know how he's doing AO. I looked at his units and I I probably premeditated what he's attacking with. I can see him in the top 100. I go and visit him, check out what he's running. You know what his best runes are. What would I run if I was him? You know, is he using this? Is he using that? What is he doing? And how can I beat him? So if I do get in a revenge war with this person, what can I put on defense to like take out a few points? And I guess a few plays I guess I made recently that were on live on stream, maybe like a month or two ago. Uh, I was in a really big revenge war, maybe like five attack revenge war back and forth with Burke on reset night. <laughs> yeah, I know I remember. everybody knows what Burke attacks with, with Lucian's. Everybody knows his Lucian's are, you know, famous right, <laughs> to right. say the least. But I threw on like a Rackin, Perna, Chloe, Verd comp. I'm like, if you want to Lucian that, go ahead. I hit him back five times, took all my points back. Climbed up a little bit. I ended up getting G three that night with the weirdest defense you could imagine, but that's because I was revenge in a revenge war and I knew what to counter with. And then even typically, even more recently, like just last weekend, I was in a revenge, a small revenge war with Mevrid, going back and forth testing out. And I'm like, all right, well I'll put on my speed AD. I think you're attacking with Pernas, so I'm going to put Zeros on with Praha, and then Tyrone in order to stun them and with Pro- with uh, Bernard. And see what happens. And I eventually caught him one time. And when you catch somebody, usually one time they they won't typically attack you back unless they think that you're gonna they're gonna beat you. So like eliminating that that possibility that they're gonna like revenge you is nice because they're not probably not gonna check you back. So if you do get in another revenge war, you know maybe their list you're down on their list. They're not gonna recheck you anymore. They already shunned you from their mind. You can change, but don't do it too early. You got to be sure that they already checked you, sure that they already looked you over, sure they gave you up already. But there is a lot of strategy to this end game level that a lot of the newer players don't really understand. They think you know you can just like buy your way up here or whatever. You know, I didn't buy my way up here. I worked my way up here. I'll tell you that much straight up. Like this is a competitive game, whether you are willing to accept it or not. It is a competitive game and. I, I really can't wait for more patches. I'm really hoping for that that live PvP. I really am. I oh man, like that would make my that'd make my day. I, no, that'd make my fucking my year. I love it. <laughs> that would be cool if they incorporated something like that. Um, with regards to the, the information that you kind of brought up right now, you know, we've been talking a lot about stuff, you know, at the level that you're at. Um, but if we had to kind of close out this arena meta talk and, and, and maybe take a look, take a step back for some of the beginner and intermediates that are new to your Twitch stream, new to the channel and checking you out, maybe could you kind of classify maybe one or two tips or even three tips or whatever as far as things that they can work on, um, you know, when they've gotten that realm of PvE progression done and they're looking to incorporate, you know, put some of that knowledge that you've provided into PvP? Yeah. All I'm going to say is Bernard. Bernard, <laughs> Bernard. If you have, especially if you have Lucians, if you have Lucians, Bernard, Megan, Double Lucian can clear, like, everybody at low rating. If you're faster than them, if they have a Chloe even, and your Lucians are decent, like, you just need to out-ruin your competition at that level. And you can just speed clear them just like that. Like every player on your list, just done, 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 done. But if you're not like in that luxury kind of stage where you have like Lucians to be able to work with, you can always fuse Akamir. Akamir is just as viable. The problem is with Akamir that you're required to summon an AoE defense breaker, regardless of what it is, a brownie or whatever. But it's all about timing up your units. Then at that point, like if you, especially on a brownie, you only, you only got one turn defense buff. You better one shot everybody on that turn, or you're going to be there for a while. So, time everything up, keep everything close together. And when you're talking about gauge buffs, you don't have to typically time up as closely because when you gauge buff, you timed everything up beforehand. You know, you brought everybody to full gauge, they're going to all move together now in one giant kill squad. So, keep everything timed up, keep everything close together so you can burst them. Look at your windows. Realize what your mistakes are when you're attacking too. Because I know I've I've been making changes still like all the time. I'm making changes to speed, 
testing out numbers, you know, crunching, see if my Megan's fast enough, see if my lure's fast enough, making sure that they can catch up to my Bernard speed. Because every time I upgrade my Bernard, I'm like, damn, I got this gap now between my Megan and my lure because my Bernard's too fast. So I got to go back to my Megan, go back to my lure, and start stealing runes from everywhere mm -hmm. in order to put an extra speed on there. And now these guys are pumping out, you know, almost 100 bonus speed just to be able to catch up to my Bernard. And it's crazy because, like, if I didn't have those speeds, I wouldn't be able to catch up to them. I need it. It needs to be there. So it's just a lot of trial and error, a lot of testing, but you can also do it before the match even starts. You don't even have to go in and trial and error. You can start number crunching, which I know we wanted to talk about number crunching, so I guess we'll start it off early with, like, gauges, right? Gauges, what's the thing about gauges? Bernard gives you 30% gauge, so that's 0.7 speed. That's 70% of his speed is what you need. So you take his base, you multiply it in by leader skill and by tower. Typically, I, I just estimate everybody's tower that I'm competing with is at 15. So for a 19 plus 15, 19 being Tyrone lead, 15 being t tower, you add those in and you multiply that by your base. Right. So you take 111 multiplied by 1.34 and then that would be your total base speed and you add in your bonus after the fact there so for me for example I, I guess I'll do it right here 111 times 1.34 and that 1.34 did come from me running Tyrone leader and it did come from me running max speed tower so for you, you have to realize if you don't have a speed leader, take out 15. If you don't have towers at all, don't don't even bother. Like just add them together, and it's good to go. But if you have any level of towers, you need to run these numbers to see what what's going on. And then I come up with like 148.74. You add in the 163, and I'm pushing out 311 speed as the gates open. So a lot of players don't run these numbers like this, but my Bernard's running 311.74 speed. You need to be able to do that right on the bat and then multiply that by 0.7 because you want 70% of that speed. That means any unit I, I am running with him in order to catch up to his speed has to be 218 speed. That's a pretty hefty amount of speed right, right. to be catching up to on any other units. You've got to be that fast on my other units in order to time them up. And it's all about adding runes, getting higher up there, getting more quality on there. Like, I know some people don't even have 218 speed on any of their units, you know, like some of my close friends that I'm trying to get into Giants and everything, like, that. that's a lot of speed. So, to get up there, what do you do, you know, like, how do you keep upgrading these units, you know, you're throwing your best runes on your subunits, just your supports, like, my Megan and my Lure have well over that amount of speed, but then you have to do the same thing for them, too. You got to take their base speed multiply it in by your tower and by your leader and then add in their bonus and then see if they're above that you typically want them to be a little bit more above that so you don't get interrupted like maybe five speed or six speed more than that just so that nobody else can steal your turn when you did buff your Megan and your your lure or whatever else first a lot of players are using like Megan lure or galleon with a uh, with a Bernard like a Tyrone Bernard um, Galleon and Akamir is a pretty common comp as well, but you need to be able to do these calculations on the spot in order to like time everything out perfectly, make sure your runes are adequate. Gotcha. And when it comes to, um, on the flip side, when we're looking at the units, I know that you're, um, you know that I'm excited about this topic here. Um, when we're talking about some of these units that, that come on in the mix, we got a lot of tools um, like your stream, you know, people can go on board, check out the rune recommendations or whatnot, and, and kind of go with that aspect. But um, talking about the mathematics and looking at a unit that they might get, uh, maybe it's a newer unit. They're not really sure how to go about figuring out if it's good or not, and, and they haven't had anybody on the back end to really test it out or whatnot. There's a couple of things that you do that most people don't in, in an effort to kind of figure out, you know, some of the multipliers or whatnot. So is there a, a basic way that you can kind of describe that so maybe people can kind of use your way of, of testing out some of the units that they have and see it if it'll work with them? Yeah, having like a lot of game knowledge, having a lot of game sense is pretty important for this. First of all, you need to understand how potent buffs are and how they work, what they do, 
their multipliers on their buffs. Like, what is a defense buff? What is a speed buff? What is attack power buff? What are dots to you? What what are dispels to you? Like, what are these debuffs? What are these abilities? What do they do? And when you get really, really in depth with it, what are the scaling on those abilities? How how much damage can they do? What what is it AOE? Is it single target? Do they have like a revive built in? Do they have tankiness built in? Is there some kind of damage reduction like Wind Monkey King or whatever? Like all of these kind of like examples, like you need to have a really, really high game sense to be able to kind of rate units before you can really even touch them or see them in game. Because and you also need a lot of information. You need somebody else to use them in game to show you what the modifiers of the abilities are first. And usually I use Wiki for that. If you ever go to the Summoners or Wiki, there's a lot of modifiers on there that have already been done, and they run the calculations and put it on there. And they're always I've never seen it wrong. So I I wouldn't buy into like I, I've heard from some players once in a while like. Oh, they're never right over there. Like I've never seen them wrong, and I've been doing this for a really long time. So I wouldn't buy into like the whole like conspiracy that they're wrong. And a prime like a, a prime example of this is like when I first seen uh, Poseidon, I was like, "This unit's garbage." Like, what? The, what is this? Like, it's okay, I guess. Like it redu- Like it looks like a really good support unit, I guess, but it's not like as good as like Rat or something. But then I then I closer look more we get more data coming out it has a 500 percent scaling on its aoe i'm like what that unit can do more damage than zero with its scaling slash uh, attack power modifier built in like when you do the when you crunch the numbers if you if you go attack or damage attack on a poseidon you're gonna hit harder than a zeros can that, that's crazy it not only does it do that it reduces your attack speed for two turns and stops you from it reduces attack gauge by 75% on each unit, and it's an AoE ability. Like, that's very, very good. Right. And also, AoE prevents your cooldowns for one turn as well. Very good unit that I... You initially cannot judge units based on their kits alone, because when you do, like I, I did, I'm like, eh. You know, I judged it personally. I didn't put it on my... Ruin, I didn't put it on my uh, monster ratings, because I, I don't rate monsters until... I know like what their scalings are now. I there's I wait for a while. I didn't even do Nat fives yet because of a very very assortment of reasons, large assortments of reasons. But you can make estimates like, oh, this is a three star unit. It does this, so it, its scaling is probably this. So you can make estimations on like four and three star units because they're not going to game break ever. They're not going to release a unit that has something they've never done before. Like they they might do things that they've never done before. But they're never going to go way past the point. They're not going to put a thousand percent scaling on an AOE unit that has like 800 attack. That's just not going to happen. And one shot everything. You know, like when when you get to those levels where you're thinking like this thing would need this in order to happen. Would they do that? No, they wouldn't do that. So then you just shun it. You give it like a lower rating. And I've been rating units for so long now that that's usually how my plan of attack is. You go in there. What's the scaling? How much damage can they do? Are they assassins? You know, assassins are typically viewed less by me because there's a plethora of assassins to choose from in the game, especially with Tassarian out now. Like, if you want a single target assassin that's squishy, or uh, there's Tassarian, there's Theo, there's, you know, if you want an AoE damage, there's Akamir. You got to compare to those kind of like units. And when you're thinking about like Theo, like Theo's got a built in life, like a uh, life protection. So same thing as like Perna. So if you want to go squishy single target assassins, like there's options out there that can stop you from dying. Even Scion. Scion is like <laughs> Scion is so underrated, even though his kit is so good and what he can do on a defense break is insane. Like Scion can just destroy you. But a lot of players don't respect that. Like if you get a defense break in a Scion, he he revives himself with with invincibility, you know, like he can, he can hit those large numbers. Think about a Lucian Auto on a defense break with a power buff. You know that thing's gonna that thing's gonna do work. And for those that don't know who Cyan is, because they're probably like uh, Cyan, who's that? That is the Awakened Water Joker, one of the units that people generally discard, but have had. We've had multiple people in the top end test it out, test the numbers, and see how it goes. And so, yeah, it's it's definitely crazy what some of these units can do. I honestly, somebody in my guild runs Cyan on. 
AD, and he wins more Guild Wars ADs than anybody in our guild, hands down, by far. Nobody, not even myself, nobody beats more players on guild defense than him. I, I cannot compete for with him, even with like my defense is like, my defense is like Orion, Perna, and Chasun, and my other ones like Theo, Iona, and Beta from the Legend Reward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy, <laughs> get it in. <laughs> But uh, th- those defenses are crazy. I would hate to fight those. And he's running like Scion on one of his, and he's winning more than me. I mean, I mean, a lot of you guys are underestimating Scion. Just telling you, just saying, don't be upset with that water joker. And the blue joker, he's pretty good. Yeah, buddy. All right. So, you know, talking about all these units and, and kind of comparing and contrasting their, their, their stats from a mathematical point of view, um, one of the other topics that we kind of wanted to hit up as far as, you know, getting them set up for, um, you know, figuring out what you're going to do or whatnot is going about how to choose the, ru- choose the runes for those particular units. So how would you go about doing it considering um, the current topics that we're discussing today? Usually you want to ruin something t- to its advantages, ruin it where it's going to be used. So, like, you're on Sierra right now. Like, look at her. Like, look at her. She is just... Those runes, zero speed? Really? Like, where's that speed? Is it missing? Is there, like, a brown spot there? That I'm, like, really? Like, what? what? You know, like, when you have units like this that are just used in one area, what do you need? You know, like, in Necropolis, you don't get any speed bonus. So, you know, it's good to have no speed. It's good and it's bad. But... With my 15% speed tower, I have 110 speed, which is maximum, I guess. I don't know. I didn't run the numbers. Somebody else did. But I have that speed cap on my Sarah, and she's my slowest unit. I want her to be the slowest unit because I want her to auto attack for that that slow. And she's on violent revenge as long as well as like all of the necropolis units. You know, like where are you going to be using this unit? What are you going to be doing with it? And what kind of quality runes should you put on it? You know, that's that's what I ask first. Is like I'm going to use this in arena. I'm going to use this on offense. So I'm going to put good runes on it, but I'm not going to put my arena defense runes on it. My arena defense runes are going to be on my best units. Now, is there any units from my arena defense that I can bring into my offense? That's that's where it really comes into play. Like Bernard, Bernard has my best set in my in my whole account. Out of all of my runes, it has my best set all all together. And where am I going to use Bernard? I'm going to use my Bernard everywhere. I'm right. going to use my Bernard in TOA hard. I'm going to use my Bernard in arena offense, arena defense. I'm going to use it in Guild Wars sometimes. I'm going to use it in Giants where I farm most of the time because Giants right now in the meta is like all about outspeeding your opponent and combo breaking them before they can move. So dispelling their will and stunning them, flame breathing them, just being faster than your opponents and combo breaking it in order to get that win. Get that win, then you're good to go, right? So I feel like as long as you're going to be using a unit all over the place, you should probably put your best runes on it, and that needs to be stressed first. Like, and foremost, you need to understand where you're going to be using the unit, when you're going to be using it, how often. Use it all the time, put your best runes on it. Then, how do you ruin the unit in particular at all? What do you, what do you need? Well, to Bernard, what do I need Bernard to do? I need Bernard to go before my enemy, and my enemy is a player. Another player, I need to be faster than them. I need to lay down the law, you know. Like, I can't be putting pressure on enemy players if I don't move first. So, you need them all speed. I run Swift Broken Set. Only thing I'm looking for on him is more and more and more speed. That's it. When you go and look at other units, what do they need? Like, um, I guess Perna. What does Perna need? Round one, Perna opens up. Azero's Flame Breath is it. It's over. Well... What can you do to stop that? You put will on it. You know, like, stop it or run resistance. I run violent will on my Perna because otherwise you can just come in there, flame breath it, and it's over. You know, I want to go into offenses. I want to go into Guild Wars offenses and be safe against speed zeros to clears so then I can resist it. Now, resistance is also a pretty good stat on, the, on Perna as well, but... That's typically like a gamble. You don't want to put resistance on it. You just want the round one. You want the 100% crit. You want the high attack. And then you want the will on violent so you can match up on that defense break and you know get somebody dead, get get an advantage in Guild Wars that that 3v, 3v2 is just too hard to get back from. 
So you plan through your units to ruin them. Same thing as like, uh, I guess Brand, he would be a prime example. Is like my Brand, his speed is low on, on purpose. Look at his defense too. His defense is there. That is very, very important to look at that I'm not running triple HP. What? You're not running triple HP? Yeah, I'm not using Bernard on defense. I'm using him on TOA. In TOA, I need him to take more healing. I need him to be a highly effective tank, yet still be able to be healed by Chasun. If Chasun's second ability only gives him 10% health, is that doing me any good? No. But if it gives him like 50% health and his defense is so high that he's just as tanky, if not tankier, then Chasun's having more effective uh, pull on her heals. So as well as when you look at Brand, there's many, many times where you're like, I want to AoE power break them before they move. And TOA 80 hard is a is probably the hardest um, thing. And all of my peers, the players that are very like high level, close to me, they ask me, how do you do TOA 80 hard? How did you get past this floor? Like That is the most asked question by my peers. And it, it is all about speed brand. Having Brand go first, because this is a revenge floor. All five of the units can revenge you at certain points. Arguably, the Yetis, you know, they, they need a buff to revenge you, but that's fine. When you power break everybody, now every time they revenge, it's half damage. If you did that first, everything is half damage. And having that up more often is better. Having your healing break more often, having your res more often is better. So I run very, very fast. I put speed on two slot and I drop everything else. And... Brand can live with the HP defense because, you know, same thing as Beretta. Beretta is going to be speed HP defense as well. Everything's going to be speed HP defense on that floor because Chasun's there and she needs to heal everybody to full every time she uses second ability. And then you use her third ability to catch up and give free turns. Yeah, buddy. I was going to say, I think I'm rocking that right about now with the high speed Brand. I love it. It's definitely, uh, you make a valid point. It's definitely one of those things that you got to. Uh, you got to incorporate in there. Um, definitely can't can't do without it. Rocking the despair stuff like that. And do you like do you like a revenge too on it, or do you just say whatever gets you the speed that you want? Um, you know, revenge is a really um, it's a very highly sought after set on my account right now. I don't really have a whole lot of revenge runes. If you guys ever watch me, I'm not running dragons. <laughs> no, I'm, my dragons runs are zero percent right now. I have like a 90% Giants and like a 10% Necropolis. Maybe 80-20, but I don't do any Dragons at all. I do zero Dragons because it's just not really in meta right now to be doing Dragons. If you're doing Dragons at a high end, I feel like that, that means you're trying to still catch up on your on your base of Violent Runes. So, realistically, like you need to be doing Giants. You need to be doing... Uh, Necropolis. You need the Willy Runes, and you need the Despair, and you need the Swift. That's pretty much all you need right now is like Swift, Despair, and Will. Because your Violent Runes probably have a good base by now. This game's been out for a long time. You probably have a good base of Violent Runes. Going faster on your Violent set, it's not really going to do much for you. But, um... <sighs> I guess that pretty much covers how to ruin units. I mean, it's all about not knowing where to go, what to do with certain units, how do you, are you going to use them, where are you going to use them, and ask yourself, why am I putting on this amazing run onto this unit? Is it is this unit going to be used everywhere? You know, that's that's what I ask myself every single time. Gotcha. And so uh, I was going to throw out an additional question here um, as far as um, just some random kind of theory craft talking. You know, a lot of the times that we get an opportunity to chat on the side, we talk about, you know, certain units that, you know, have some really, really good potential um, in a segment that I like to call Once to Watch. If there was a unit that is, um, you, you know, you feel at the current time is, is one of those things that, you know, might might be a potential, you know, superstar uh, in the later stages of the game once people, you know, get an opportunity to, to set it up properly and find a, find a spot in it, um, what would that unit be and why? Um... Kabbalah is an up-and-comer, or Kabila, the Light Harpy. That unit, I don't know, I still need more testing against it, 
but because it didn't say that it got buffed, but I've fought it a few times now, and it seems like all gauge buffs have been buffing more often. That unit is the fastest gauge buffer in the game. And I've said it a million times in the past on my stream, like that unit eventually, when it comes down to it, at a very, very end game level, is going to be very, very good. But there are disadvantages that I didn't like re really premeditate. Is its HP is like 7.9k at 6 star max level. Even though it's got the 120 speed, that's fine for like maybe manual play arena. But if somebody wants to like just bruise you out, they can easily kill that unit, no problem. Like if, even if you run speed HP HP on it, you can still one shot it without like a defense break. That's it's only gonna get like maybe 23k at max. Like maybe a little bit more, maybe a little less. But I I know that most players are dealing at least 23k just with a power buff. So I don't know yet if we're ever gonna see it played unless it gets a small buff. But this unit is one to be worried about. Because if it does get a buff and it goes back to its old its old ways where it was buffing crit rate reduction and it was buffing speed and the gauge as the fastest gauger, if it goes back and this unit ever gets buffed, we're going to have to be worried about it because it will kind of take over. And I don't have one. Because if you're barely faster than somebody, you're going to be way faster than them with this. Like, that's nine extra speed. That's... It's a lot of speed. No, that is that, a lot of speed. People are like, oh, nine, that's nothing, man. It's like, no, that seriously is, yeah. Nine speed, then you multiply that by 1.5, you know, you're already at 11 something. So, like, that, that's that's a lot of speed, especially when you're thinking about um, speed leader uh, and your totem and then your swift set. You know, that's that adds into a lot of speed, man. That That's what it, like, say Vanessa is 33. 33, then you add in 15 for the tower, and then you add in 0.25 for swift set, you multiply that by 9, that's 15 and a half speed bonus, just off of base, I mean, that that's not just 15 actually, that's 15 and a half bonus, you add in 9, that's 20, you know, 24 extra speed just because you have that. That's 24 something speed, I mean people don't. Yeah. Oh, no, wait, no, I, I multiplied that in, I already added it in, so it is 15 actually, my bad. Okay. 15 um, and a half, damn. What was I going to say, I, I was going to talk about the, this uh, with you off camera, but... Um, I was hoping that maybe you have had uh, some people already kind of theory craft. We've had that, you know, recent group of of uh, units come out, and uh, the one before the Halloween, the the mummies and whatnot here. And and when I'm talking about potential, I was looking at a couple of the units. While it didn't seem like on paper it might do good, um, I really, really thought that there might be some potential in this particular unit. I don't know if you took a look at it with um, two attacks based on the max HP and then its own passive being able to go ahead and. Uh, uh, have that basically almost kind of despair effect where you get the opportunity to stun every three turns or, or every turn 25% chance to stun. Um, so what's your thoughts on this particular unit? Can you see it viable? Um, or is the stats overall, um, you know, not something to take a look at? You know, I don't think that it's going to make higher end play because when you look at it, its speed is just that of like a, a beast monk, for example. Right. And... It's not doing like as much as a beast monk, in, especially because its base stats are very very low compared to them. Um, I was looking at the win one. The win one looked okay for like maybe earlier in the game if you're trying to like you know get through content because dots are very important. A lot of players like don't realize that. Like when I recommend Megan, I'm recommending Megan because her dots alleviate time restraint. And it alleviates damage requirement. Because when you're dotting every single turn, if you put her on violent and she's dotting like crazy, mm -hmm. you know, you just, you basically just did like a perna blast to that thing like five times, you know. Like you dot, you put 10 dots on there, that's 50% health. Whatever health it had, you know, whatever dungeon you're in, that that's a lot of damage. Especially when you're thinking about defense. That armor ignores too. It just takes 5% right off, you're done. 5% is gone. So dots are very, very 
um, overlooked by newer players. They don't realize that kind of uh, damage potential. And this unit has dots. It has all of the dots. It has crazy dots. Right. <laughs> like, right. Good deal. So, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Did we just say something? No. All right. No. Cool. All righty, my man. Any other units that you can uh, think about? Um, new patch of units really didn't offer anything for like end and end game level that I've seen yet. Nobody's really busted anything out other than the dark, um, dark desert queen. She wrecked me the other day, and. I don't think I've wanted a dark nat 5 ever until then. She can... Oh my goodness. She can AoE, defense break, glancing hit, and HP disturb you. All in one ability. She attacks you three times with that. She's a 24% speed leader usable everywhere. She right. puts power break on her auto attack, and then... You cannot resist it. <laughs> GG. <laughs> like, her passive is like, I, put, I do all these crazy debuffs, you can't resist it. What up? Like, how are you going to come back when you're all defense broken and enemy HP re uh, recovered, stopped? Like you, And then you're glancing too, and then power buff. You're glancing so you're not critting. You're defense broken so you're dying. You can't heal back up. And then when she atta auto attacks you, she has got power break on you. Like, you are doing no damage, and you're taking all of the damage, and you can't stop it. Like this, this unit is literally AIDS. Like that is basically <laughs> the form of AIDS. Like oh, you man. have went to full blown AIDS with this unit. Like when I seen that, I want that unit so bad. Like that is like lure to the extreme. Like <laughs> yeah, oh, Veramos doesn't counter it. Resistance doesn't counter it. Like. <laughs> Once you're dispelled and you're open to her, it's over. Like you're done. Like there's, she's got four debuffs. So even if Veramos moves, you know the likelihood of him dispel, violent proccing and dispelling everything. Like, dang. Especially in a resistance heavy meta with the like tanks usually run heavy resistance in this meta. Like this unit's like I ain't about that. <laughs> right, right, right. And with regards to like. Uh... You know, with regards to all the changes that you were talking about, with regards to, you know, units that probably could use some improvements or whatnot, um, if there was one thing to change about, you know, whether it is the arena, the guild wars, or whatever the case may be, what would that be and why? For uh, buffing units? Yeah, buffing, nerfing. I mean, I know we already talked about nerfing Praha. Is there anything else that you could think about since we know that we got Man. people in the community as far as the comp to a side listening? There is a lot of units that are just... Almost. They're like, man, I can go through my storage right now and I'll just tell you every unit that I think there should be buffed because <laughs> there you go. I have a plethora of, I saved everything. So like when I look through what I didn't build yet, it's pretty much, be, I didn't build it because it's not good enough. All right. Water Monkey King, still not good enough. Ethna, still not good enough. Um, every assassin. That is the biggest one. Every single assassin is like, what are you doing? Why does the water one not affect more often? Like, her harmful effect would be so good. You guys just released the Dark Harpy, and the Dark Harpy brands and defense breaks in one ability at 100% chance. Why does the water one not do that? Why do you guys have the Dark Harpy doing that, but the water assassin won't do that? This unit's so much better than a Dark Harpy. Like, th this unit, water, the water assassin, can defense break you, it can brand you, and then it scales off of uh, attack speed on its third ability, and it scales really well. It does, like, very, very high high amounts of damage at like a uh, very fast speeds but the thing is, is like why does this unit have that you know like same thing as the wind assassin and the fire assassin like these units are so close to almost good like the the fire assassin is very comparable to darian but it doesn't have the base hp so it can't ever be that good it has branding and it has defense break but the the effect rates on the brand and defense break are so low that it's inviable you cannot use it at any stage of the game, regardless at like low rating or high rating, because that it just doesn't ever happen. It goes like 15 times in a row, and then the enemy is just sitting there like, "Huh, you didn't even, you didn't even make me resistance check it." Like I, th I feel like the units that are doing harmful effects with low rates need to be changed because resistance is also diminishing the har the harmful effect rate. So when you have these really low harmful effect rates on units like this, they're not strong. 
because those low effect rates are getting even lower with resistance checks. So like all of the assassins need to get buffed, every single one of them. I feel like the barb kings are all kind of weak as well. I I don't I see very very niche uses on those. I I have I think all of them, and I don't except the dark and light. I don't use any of those. Those are mm, no. <laughs> um, the Frankenstein seemed pretty weak. I was like, oh, a fire copper that was amazing. I thought when I read the ability that it scales off of defense. I'm like, yes. And then I went and tried the scaling, and I'm like. Are you kidding me? You have copper out in the game. Copper's doing these giant blows, and this is exactly like copper. It says the exact same thing, pretty much, except it does no damage. Just remove its stun and give it some more damage. We want we want another copper in the game. You know that would be nice to have a fire copper, have the the toys to play around with, but it'll, just not letting us get these toys out. I guess once in a while. Um, who else is pretty weak? All of the bounty hunters, they just got nerfed. Regardless of whether they want to admit that that's a nerf or not, you guys, a lot of players, like the development side, I can see what you're doing. You want Necropolis units. Every bounty hunter just got nerfed. They need to get buffed again. You, you just nerfed them all. They can't. They don't have kill condition in PvP now. They they got they got removed pretty much from PvP in, in order, like in general. They all need a buff. They are all too weak. Walkers, whether it's any of them, the dark one. Light one, fire one, water one, wind one. They all are too weak. They need a buff. Big time. Um, let's see. Who else here? Aquila. I didn't make Aquila for a reason I said earlier. Because I just couldn't get around to it. She or he or whatever it is. It might dispel you. Or it might buff. And that's the most displeasing thing to me is like, Praha and Juno, what are they going to do? They're going to dispel you almost every single time because that's all they can do. So Juno has a passive as her third ability and Praha has a heal. Praha ain't going to heal unless she's got a heal, right? So she's going to obviously use her dispel more often. Aquila kind of needs a PvP buff where it favors dispelling to make it viable. And that's the reason I didn't build it. Um, look through here. The Lizardmen. The Lizardmen's defense break, I've tried them, and their defense break, same thing going back, harmful effect rate is so low. It's like a 15% chance. That's never going to happen. Right. It, it's never, ever going to happen. The defense break needs to get buffed. And then Beast Monks in general. All Beast Monks, I know a lot of you players might, might think that Beast Monks are viable. I I don't see them on Reset Night. You ju like They do not... They don't make it in, like, this Guardian 3, like, legend area. There's, like, one guy that runs one Ratesh, and he's only up there because his runes on everything else are immaculately amazing. Like, he plays his comp very, very well. But, honestly, I, I look for him because I feel like it's a very free win because I have Perna and Zero, so I just go in there with a very easy comp against him. But I do feel like Beast Monks still are not at a level. Whether it's Shazam, whether it's Raul and... and uh, Raul and... Chandra with the hug that needs to change like that. You, that oh my god, they're they're so manipulatable at high end that it's just yeah. so easy to beat these units. That was the first thing I told him uh, when talking about revamping units and whatnot. The the Chandra so exploitable if they you get used on defense. Yeah, like you cannot, you almost can't use it on defense. Like you can use it, but it's like it's like at a high level play like we know exactly what Chandra does let's be real we know that it's gonna hug that unit and it's like dispel meta like oh whatever it's over I, before it even happened I just turned your hug into a dot like I would like to see like maybe a pat like a non buff hug that would be a good buff for it like where it's not a buff on them it's just like I'm targeting you now instead so it's like a change where like I'm gonna target you and you can't take damage and it's not a buff it's just a three turn ability and then when it wears off, I'm not hugging you anymore. You know, that would be cool. Or get it, like, AoE. If it's, like, an AoE hug, where, like, everybody gets hugged, and that wouldn't even be overpowered either. Like, me and Scat have talked about that many times, where, like, if Raul and Chandra did that, those Beast Monks would be very good. Then, the Beast Monks, I still don't like, like, even Ritesh. I have Ritesh. He's in storage right now. Like, no joke. Oh, man. <laughs> like, my Ritesh and Chandra are in storage, and I... And same thing with my Water Monkey King and my Ethna. Like, 
more Nat Fives rot in my storage than I have out to display and use. <laughs> like, I have I have three Katarinas in storage, as well. Like, all my Nat Fives are just dead dead in storage because they cannot be used. There's no role for them in the game because there's three and four star units that outclass them. And that's one thing that a lot of players don't respect is that when I talk about like wh who's the best reviver in the game, who's the best healer in the game, who's um, the best damage dealer in the game, like who will deal the most amount of damage, um, who supports the best, things like this, you're going to be like, well, it's got to be on that fives, right? No. Brand, best reviver. Chessun, best healer. Uh, Dark Samurai or Fire Samurai or... Light Samurai, those are the highest damage potential units in the game for AoE. And then, um, last would be like best support. You know, you could talk about like Bernard, you could talk about like uh, Veramos. There's so many really, really good supports that you can get just for free that are not only the best. Like I, like I said, Bernard's one of my best units, is my best unit because of the runes he has on him. But Bernard is probably the best support in the game, definitely, hands down. So, like, all of the, in my eyes, all the best units are right there for you to get. But then when you get to that Guardian 3 level, you're under that scrutiny where you need to do certain things. You need to accomplish certain things. You need to, like, stop your the combos, so you need to dispel, and you need you need abilities from the Nat 5s that only the Nat 5s can have, offer realistically at that level. But before then, it's like, I was making it without these things, you know? I was doing it. A lot of players are doing it. With just Nat fours and Nat threes, some are even using Nat twos. Yeah, buddy. Let's see here, and then of course uh, we got ourselves the infamous epic fail question. You know, talking about the different epic fails that we have in our lives. Uh, have you had any recent epic fails? Maybe units or, or runes that you've done or whatever like that. Any anything new? Um. Oh yeah, I did. I had the worst. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah. I. This one's really bad. So I was, before stream, I was, like, doing the double XP, and I'm, like, leveling up this Roke for Necropolis, because I'm going to try, like, double Roke in there. Mm -hmm. And I just awakened and max leveled this brand new non-skilled up Roke, and I'm like, oh, I want to try out, you know, my, my first Roke. So I'm going to go six-star my, my main Roke that I had ever since way, way back from the beginning of the game mm -hmm. in storage. I go to six-star, and, and I'm playing, like, H1Z1, with uh, F1000, and I six-starred the wrong rope. <laughs> it didn't have, oh, did it. It, it didn't have skill-ups on it, oh, and I was sitting damn. there farming skill-ups all day long for the thing. Oh, damn, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was hurts. funny. That hurts, that hurts. Yeah. Uh. But I was, I'm going to six-star both of them anyway. Might as well. I'm trying to think here. We just, we just got talking about the... The epic fail that I had before coming on here, what was it? What, what did I do? Oh, every single episode of Educate and Dominate, you all seen the Skype thing in the in the corner of the screen. Oh yeah. I told him like you can X out of that, and he's like, epic fail. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's all every if you look at every single one, there's like this little corner thing with a little button. You see the little X, and I just moved it over so I didn't. Let people see, like, if they're using their real-life names on Skype or whatever like that. And, and so I didn't realize, like, I thought when you exit it out, it shuts the call off or whatever. So, yeah. He was just watching a video and told me about that. Um, you know, this is 30 episodes, right? 30, 31, 32. I think it's the 32nd episode. You would you would think I'd, like, I'd be a Skype professional. I got my Ph.D. in Skypeology. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. That's for sure. <laughs> But it's all good. Um, I know that we've given a couple of uh, shout-outs between some of the YouTubers and streamers. Anybody else that you want to give to specifically? Um, man, who? There's so many. There's so many. I oh man, so many people have been streaming. I would just say just come over to Twitch, see who's streaming when you got time. Come and watch anybody, man. Anybody like we're so many people on summers we're streaming all the time now. It's crazy. It's We've grown so far, like, there's always, always, always somebody streaming on Twitch TV now for summers where, like, 24-7 around the clock, we got people over there streaming. Mm -hmm. I mean, go check us out whenever you want. Like, every single person, dude. Like, check out whoever you want. Go see what, what they're doing. I My stream times are, I usually start at, like, 4 o'clock weekdays, 6 o'clock on Friday through sun, Sunday. 
and I just go until whenever. I usually go pretty late in the morning, even sometimes. Sometimes I'll even do 24 hours once in a while. But I mean, that's my job now. I mean, I, I love it. It's amazing. I've, I've, I'm streaming full time, and I've been working a long, long time to get to this point, and I love it absolutely. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, on behalf of. Um, Bomber myself, I guess we got to give a shout out to all the people that have been instrumental in assisting us and getting us where we are today. You know, there's a lot of work that's put on our end, but you know, we we couldn't go on without saying that there's so many people, um, you know, within the community that have helped us with various things uh, within our channels, within our streams, in order to improve the content for not just you guys, but um, yeah, but basically just just for you guys, yeah, for for everybody out there. So, you know, big shout out to everybody that's going on the works. I know we got a lot of people in my um, Epic Fail community, um, all my guild leaders that I've assigned to to watch over my three guilds. Um, they're doing a great job. And then again, everybody uh, that has come on board with regards to educate and dominate. Um, you know, big shout out to you guys for making it, it is what it is today. Yeah, I I guess I got to shout out my viewers too because you guys make my dream a reality. Like, you guys give me so many ideas. You guys help me out in so many different ways, like, behind the scenes. Like, you guys promote me. You guys push me forward. You guys make me a better person. Shout out to every single one of you guys that watch me in my community over there on Twitch that does come every single day. I love all you guys because if with all you guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. I would, you know, I'd be, oh, man, I'd be working some crap job that I would hate. I love, I love my job right now. I love what I'm doing right now, and I wouldn't trade it for the world and you guys you guys the viewers you guys are the ones that make it real and i love it gotcha and then of course with regards to the twitch stream we, we can't go without saying how can they go about you know helping you with regards to that um you want to talk a little bit about that and how they can get all set up with the subscribe button yeah if if you think i'm worthy of support i don't do like ads on my stream so I don't really make ad revenue unless I'm gone. If I'm going to take a break or something where I'm going to eat or whatever temporarily, like go and make a sandwich, go into the bathroom, whatever. I don't go. I don't leave stream for more than like five minutes at a time, six, seven minutes at a time, depending on what I'm doing. But I'll play three minutes of ads when I'm gone, and that's like the only ad revenue I get. If other than donations and subscribing to my stream, if you ever go to twitch.tv slash omgbomber and you feel like I have earned your support, like I do mad work i i'm always out every single day i've been streaming like maybe 90 days straight or whatever i got back from new york every single day since i got back from new york after meeting nick the greek and panda and uh trolling and everybody out there anna and everybody that was awesome came oh man i shout out to all you guys in new york that was one of my best experiences of my life but uh if you think that i'm worthy of your support it is 4.99 a month and you get Twitch icons for OMG Bomber. I I'm gonna be updating them as much as I can. I have already submitted requests to have uh, Summoners War related icons, and they're working on the copyright agreement with Twitch. They've been doing it for a long time, but eventually I'll have Summoners War related icons. I hope, and you get uh, special access to a whole bunch of things. You can come and talk to me in my uh, Discord. I'm almost always in subscriber channels. 99% of the channels are subscribers, so you can talk to like me, Scat, um, you know, a lot of times like Ken comes in there, Barian's been in there, there's a lot of high-end players, like we, we come in there, Childish has been in there, we, we all go in there a lot, and you do get access to that privately as well, off and on stream, whenever you want, you can come into our Discord, then there's my subs only page that you get a lot of content, I do subscriber only friends list slots. I rotate them in and out, give them away every Monday. I do that. There's a lot that I do to give back to my subscribers, the people that are making this possible, because that is really the only support that I like. I really take. I really want like subscriptions rather than like donations or because um, the subscription amount is like peace of mind. I know exactly what I'm gonna get at the end of the month, and I can plan out like financially through everything. Then. And that's the main way of supporting me. Like I wouldn't ask for anything else other than a small like four ninety nine a month. You know, like hashtag sell at one time. But it's, <laughs> my man. <laughs> but that's really like what keeps me going and being able to do what I'm doing. You know, doing all my guides, doing like help videos, doing um, 
ratings, helping out all the people I help out on a daily basis, waking up every morning and coming to my stream and doing that. You know, that's that financial like freedom is what keeps me going and that's the only thing that keeps me going really is that subscribe button recently at least good deal uh, any final words before you close off the video sir um i think we got everyone man i honestly shout out to everybody that's been helping out the community recently i know a lot of my viewers have been going to other channels that do play summers where some big league Twitchers and some big league YouTubers that are starting to play Summers War that haven't started streaming or making videos on it yet. And I've seen a lot of big leaguers come into it. Like, shout out to you guys. You guys are the ones that are going over there promoting the game to the other streamers, other YouTubers, and, you know, bringing them to the dark side. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> and that's really helping me out in general. Like, it's helping everybody out that's in our community. Like, we're, we're starting to see more and more sub buttons getting got by some uh, Summoner's War players, by Summoner's War in general. Like, I think there's three now. There's like, um, I think there's a Brazilian guy. There is me and YDCB. And there's going to be more subscribe buttons for people that are streaming as long as it stays on this path because there's so many people coming to our community. It's just thank you guys for the support. Cool, cool. All right, guys. Well, again, thank you, Bomber, for everything that you do for the community, and I appreciate you coming on board for the channel once again on Educate and Dominate. Oh, thank you for doing everything for the community, man. Yeah, buddy. All right, guys. Well, thank you all for tuning in. It's a pleasure to make these videos for you, as always. It's your boy, Childish, and oh, my God, Bomber, with Childish Plays checking out. Take care, and we'll see you next time, guys. We're out.